In this video, we discuss the structure of the internet, define the term router and gateway, and consider where and why they are used. The internet is the largest and most well-known wide area network, or WAN. It is a collection of interconnected networks spanning the world. The internet is nothing more than a collection of hardware, cables, wireless connections and routers, etc. Here is a visualization of the internet. Each white dot represents a router and each colored line a connection to a router. It is not to be confused with the World Wide Web, which is simply a service which runs on the internet. Here's a highly abstracted view of a section of the internet. Here is a home network connected via a typical wireless router. The router is connected to an internet service provider or ISP, typically via telephone connection or fiber optic cable. The ISP is connected to a domain name server and other routers on the backbone of the internet. Those routers are also connected to their own LANs, other routers and servers. Each country and continent uses high capacity backbone cables connected by transcontinental leased lines laid across seabeds. These intercontinental cables transfer around 98% of global data at data transfer capacities of over 340 million terabits per second. National internet service providers connect directly into this backbone infrastructure and are responsible for distributing internet connections to small local providers who in turn provide access to homes and businesses. A huge variety of hardware is used for building networks and connecting to the internet. We've previously discussed wireless access points. For the exam, you'll also require to understand what a router and a gateway is, as well as considering where and why they're used. The other devices here are beyond the specification. If you're interested, we touch on them at the end of the video. So let's start with the router. Routers come in many different shapes and sizes, but they essentially all do the same thing. They direct traffic in the form of packets from one router to another using IP addresses. They join local area networks to the internet with a public IP address. They pass local data onto an external network such as the internet. And they receive inbound data and direct it to a specific device on a local area network. A typical router will have a cable to the internet, other cables connecting to computers and other devices on the LAN, and wireless connectivity. A gateway, in many ways, is very similar to a router in that it receives packets on a network and forwards them to the destination based on an address. However, unlike a router, a gateway can deal with packets traveling between devices or networks using different protocols. The gateway first strips off the header data from the incoming packet, leaving just the raw data, and then adds a new header in the format needed for the destination network before sending it on its way. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key questions. How is the internet structured? And what is the purpose of a router and gateway? So that's all you need to know for the specification. But if you'd like to learn a little bit about some other common forms of hardware, put your pen down and watch the rest. So in the exam, the only networking hardware you need to know about is the wireless access point, the router and gateway. However, there's a lot more involved with hardware. In this section, we'll take a brief look at modems, different cable types, network interface cards, hubs, and switches. A modem transforms digital information from your computer into analog signals that can be transmitted through wires. It can also translate incoming analog signals back into digital data that your computer can understand. It does this by modulating and demodulating electrical signals sent through phone lines coaxial cables and other types of wiring. Most standalone modems have only two ports, one that connects to the outside world and an Ethernet port that connects to a computer or a router. 
If you examine your home network, you'll probably find you have a single device with a connection traveling outside your house. These days, most internet service providers give their customers one physical device that serves as both a modem and a router. They're still different technologies. Not all modems include routers, not all routers have modems. You'll need both, integrated or not, to connect your home or organization to the internet. There are two main methods of connecting devices, wired and wireless. With physical wired connections, we have many cable options to choose from. The three most popular are twisted pair, coaxial and fiber optic. A twisted pair cable is made up of a pair of insulated copper wires. These cables can be affected by noise from external magnetic fields, but they're more affordable than coaxial and fiber optics. They're only able to provide low bandwidth. Twisted pair cables are generally used for telephone networks, data networks, and cable shielding. Coaxial cables are made up of four cylindrical components. A solid conductor wire, a layer of insulation, a grounding conductor, and a layer of exterior insulation. They can also be affected by noise from external magnetic fields, but less than twisted pair. They provide moderate bandwidth. They're more expensive than twisted pair, but cheaper than fiber optic. Coaxial cables are used for feed lines that connect radio transmitters and receivers to antennas, as well as computer network connections, digital audio, and cable television. Fiber optic cables are made up of very thin optical fiber bundles in a single cable. The fibers can be either glass or plastic. They have the highest noise immunity as the light rays are unaffected by electrical noise. Due to their high bandwidth capabilities, fiber optic cables are more expensive than both coaxial and twisted pair. They're commonly used to support long distance connections between cities and countries, as well as data centers and organizations transmitting large volumes of data. Without a network interface card, a computer cannot connect to a network. And NIC, for short, allows both wired and wireless communications between computers on a LAN or connected to large-scale networks using the Internet Protocol. A NIC is both a physical and a data link layer device, providing the necessary circuitry for physical layer processes and some data link layer processes to run on it. A hub allows you to connect multiple devices to one network. It operates on the physical layer and is considered a passive device. In other words, it simply broadcasts the transmission it receives to all other connected devices. Unfortunately, that means the network can easily become flooded with unnecessary traffic. It is purely a hardware device. There's no software installed on it. Hubs are typically much slower than switches in terms of data transfer. And finally, we have a switch. This also allows you to connect multiple devices to one network. It operates on the data link layer and what's called an active device, meaning it can inspect transmission and route them to the correct device, keeping unnecessary traffic to a minimum. A switch typically has software installed on it for administration and configuration purposes. Switches are typically much faster than hubs in terms of data transfer. Although we've presented each of these pieces of hardware as discrete devices, many modern network devices serve multiple purposes. Look at the device that connects your home to the internet. Chances are it's a single device with all of the functionality of a modem, a switch, a router, and a wireless access point. On top of this, it also probably is acting as a firewall, a dynamic host configuration protocol server, and a network address translator.